In this video, we'll be looking at similar figures. So first of all, what are similar figures? Well, similar figures are two figures that are the same shape, but they can be different sizes. The side lengths of the original figure need to be multiplied by the same number to get the side lengths of the new figure. This is called the scale factor. The angles in the original shape need to be the same as the angles in the new figure. Notice if you have the same angles, then you will have the same shape. These are called corresponding angles. We also have corresponding sides, which are the sides that have the same relative position in geometric figures. So notice the red side in rectangle A would be the corresponding side to the red side in rectangle B because they're in the same relative position in two geometric figures. Notice the blue line in rectangle A is also a corresponding side to the blue line in rectangle B because they are also in the same relative position in the two geometric figures. So we want to determine are these figures similar. In order to do this we could look at it and determine is there a scale factor? Is there a number that both corresponding sides are being multiplied by? So if we look at rectangle A, we notice this is the smaller one. So we can look at the blue corresponding sides. Notice the 2 and the 4. And we could think to ourselves, what times 2 gives us 4? Well, 2 times 2 gives us 4. So we know that the side length, the blue side length in B is twice as big as the blue side length in A. So 2 times 2 is 4. Now we have to determine, is it the same scale factor for the red corresponding sides? So we have 4 and 8, so 4 times what is 8? Well, 4 times 2 is also 8. So notice both of my corresponding sides are being multiplied by the same number, the scale factor from rectangle A to rectangle B is 2. Then this one would be a similar figure. Looking at the second example, are these similar figures? Notice for the last one it was pretty easy to see that the multiple was 2, Therefore, our scale factor was 2. Unfortunately, it's not always going to work out this way. It's not always going to be that simple. So looking at this example, we know 4, 6, and 2, 5 are the corresponding sides. 4 times what is 6 is not that simple. You may be able to figure out if you think about it for a bit. But then also 2 into 5 is not the easiest one to figure out in your head as well. So what you can do is use your corresponding sides to your advantage. We have 4 and 6 and 2 and 5. So what you can do is you can make ratios with these corresponding sides in order to find out what the scale factor will be. How you do this is you can take the bigger side length, the 6, and divide it by the 4. Take the 5 and divide it by the 2. When you do this, you will get your scale factor from the small rectangle to the big rectangle. The cool thing about it is if you want to find out the scale factor from the big one to the small one, you would just need to do the reciprocal. So instead of 6 divided by 4, you would do 4 divided by 6. But anyway, back to it. So determining scale factors, we have 6 divided by 4, which is 1.5. So 4 times 1.5 is 6. Then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So 2 times 2.5 would give you 5. Notice these numbers are different, not the same number. Therefore, there is no scale factor, and these would not be similar figures. Next one, are these similar figures? Well, let's see. Remember, once again, we have to pay attention to our corresponding sides. So we have a 4 in rectangle A and a 12 in rectangle B. 4 times what is 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. Now going to our blue sides, 2 times what is 6? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Notice both of my corresponding sides are being multiplied by 3. Since this is the case, yes, they will be similar, and the scale factor from rectangle A to rectangle B will be 3. Next one, are these similar figures? Whoa, we got decimals. But don't worry, 
It's going to be okay. Let's take it a step at a time. So 1.5 into 3.75. Well, 1.5 times 2 is 3. So maybe it's not going to be as pretty as we would like. So what we need to do is set up ratios again. Remember the corresponding sides. I do not have them highlighted this time, but hopefully you can recognize that the 1.5 is the corresponding side to the 3.75, and the 0.5 is the corresponding side to the 1.25. So instead of multiplying 1.5 by a whole bunch of numbers, let's use the ratio rule. I can take 3.75 divided by 1.5, and then 1.25 divided by 0.5. When I do this, in both cases, I get 2.5. So then we know that the scale factor would be 2.5 since I'm multiplying both of my corresponding sides by 2.5. So yes, these would be similar figures, and the scale factor from rectangle A to rectangle B would be 2.5. Okay, so now I want to look at the connection between perimeter and area and the scale factor. I think the easiest way to do this is just to look at it and then kind of work backwards. So you can find the perimeter of the new figure by taking the original perimeter and multiplying it by the scale factor. So for all of these examples, we're going to use rectangle A as our original figure and then B and C as our new figures. So the perimeter of A, or the original figure, is 6. So in order to find the perimeters of the other figures, we just multiply this 6 by the scale factor. So notice, the scale factor from A to B is 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. Same thing with rectangle C. You can take the original perimeter of 6, multiply it by the scale factor of 3, to get the new perimeter of 18. No matter what shape it is, as long as you know the scale factor, you can multiply your original perimeter by the scale factor to find out your new perimeter. In order to find the area of the new figure, you're going to take the area of the original figure and multiply it by the scale factor squared, or the scale factor times itself. So notice the area of rectangle A is 2. Scale factor of 2 to rectangle B so you're going to take the scale factor 2 times itself. 2 times 2 gives you times 4 altogether. So the original area 2 times 4 will give us the new area of 8. And then from A to C, there's a scale factor of 3. So scale factor squared or scale factor times itself would be 3 times 3 or times 9 altogether. So 2 times 9 gives you the new area of 18. If this information I'm giving you right now seems a little confusing, I recommend you pause the video and kind of go through these examples by yourself.